Hello USC fans, Connor Morissette and Chris Trevino were back on campus after USC's fifth spring practice of 2024. Time for instant analysis. Let's get into everything that we saw this afternoon, Chris. Let's start with this, Kyle Ford, USC receiver, one-time USC receiver, transferred to UCLA last season. He walks into campus or into practice, not campus. He was on campus, and Lincoln Riley speaking with him. Caleb Williams is talking with him. Danton Lynn is catching up with him. Does that make you think Kyle Ford could be back in the Cardinal and Gold coming up next season, or what do you think? Yeah, it makes you think a little bit about that. I mean, USC obviously we've talked about they need more wide receiver that they have seven scholarship wide receivers that is not enough to go through the entire season especially a physical big 10 season so yeah maybe that's a that's a re-relationship they're going to heal a little bit come back Kyle Ford uh yeah it, taking in old talking to old people that he knows and it, it, there's some smoke there I'll just say that there's some smoke there so we'll see if that ends up com becoming coming to fruition down the line and I'll just say this too the warm reception he got that really stood out to me it didn't really seem like there was any ill will or any bad feelings he looked happy to be there Lincoln Riley going over I thought was significant and just people were happy to see him so I wouldn't be surprised based on the interaction today if he was back at USC of course a lot needs to happen um, for that to go into effect because the portal isn't even open right now but he is in so he I think in. once spring practice ends we could see him maybe for fall camp but some time needs to go by. Anyway, let's get into practice today. In terms of observations, a lot of the same. It started with kickoff return, punt return, some defensive back drills where they're trying to knock the ball out of the receiver's hand, so ball security, and then the position groups all kind of do their own thing. No real notable observations. I thought it was interesting. The only one really I had was Bookie Radley-Hiles, the defensive graduate assistant. He was really working with some of the cornerbacks at the end of the viewing period, and he had a nice moment with John Humphrey where he explained a rep to him, and it just stood out that he was really doing some coaching today, and it, you can watch it on Sights and Sounds. I got a nice clip of him doing that. After practice, though, Chris, we heard from Eric Henderson, who, of course, was the MVP of the Crawfish Boil, locking down all of those commitments in 2025. He was asked some recruiting stuff, some stuff about spring ball, some stuff about coaching college players compared to NFL players. What were your takeaways and just what were the favorite things you, he said that stood out to you today? Can I just get a dog work real quick? <laughs> did he say dog work today? <laughs> he did not say dog work, but I was trying to get you to say dog work. No, maybe, no. maybe by the end we'll get you to say dog work. But yeah, I feel like 80% of his questions were about recruiting, you know, coming off that monster Sunday where they landed five commitments, including multiple defensive linemen, including Justice Terry, the five star they flipped from Georgia. So a lot of the questions centered around that. Obviously, he can't talk by names. He can't say names. He can only speak in generalities. But, you know, he was asked, you know, what did it mean to make a statement like that? He said he was great for the university, but it's a long way to go. I think he was firm in, his, in that statement. It's a long way to go. This is March signings happen in December. He knows there's a long recruiting process, but it was a great day for Trojan fans. They got to build off that, and he was very happy with, you know, getting a day like that under his belt because we know he's going to put in that dog work on the recruiting trail. I'm going to see how many times I can say dog work in this, but, you know, he's all about relationships. He was asked, you know, what's his recruiting pitch? And he's like, I'm all about relationships. You know, USC sells itself, the, the connections you can have, the education, it being a blue blood story program, and just him being a guy with builds off connections connections and has relationship and likes talking to people you know that's what it's all about for him and that was kind of his main recruiting pitch things he echoed in his initial uh presser i have brought this up in the past but i just love how he still stays in touch with his high school coach if that doesn't tell you about the kind of relationship guy that he is when it comes to recruiting and this crazy football world and i don't know what does a guy who really helped him get to college and then help mold him into being the coach that he is today. The fact that he still gives back to his school and is in touch with his high school coach, I, I think is is really significant. I had the chance to speak with Easton Mascarenas Arnold for the first time since he joined USC from Oregon State. His brother, Akili, the safety. Chris was in that scrum, so we can get your reaction to that. But Easton, I thought it was interesting. He is a leader already on this team, and he's only been here for a few months. He just talked about how he felt like there was a leadership spot open for him, and he's doing a really good job of leading by example he didn't say he was doing a good job he said he's trying to lead by example I'm saying he's doing a good job of it because every time you talk to a player or a coach who are some leaders Easton comes up Lincoln Riley mentioned it on Trojans Live a couple weeks ago some other players have mentioned it I don't want to say right now for sure he's going to be a captain but he looks like a guy who certainly could fill that role for USC and I wouldn't be surprised if he was a captain in a few months how about Achille Arnold his stepbrother but 
their parents, I guess, got married in 2012, so they like to refer to each other as real brothers, not stepbrothers. What did you take away from his interview? Yeah, he was great. You know, you can tell he's personable, big smile. They're happy to be back in SoCal. As you said, they're from the area, and it's like surreal for him to be a USC Trojan because, you know, we grew up watching them, obviously the Polynesian connection. So it's great to be here. He's, he's just trying to, you know, get used to it all, you know, coming from a small place like Corvallis out there, a small, smaller college town to, you know, back to L.A., and I asked him about, you know, being a leader, but also being a new guy in that room. He's learning the defense just like most of those guys in that room. And he said, you know, it's, it's a balance. He's getting used to meeting a lot of new people and, you know, being teammates with a lot of new people, but also picking the time when he is a leader. But again, he is still learning. He really likes the scheme. He thinks the scheme allows him to just be him and play play safety, and I think that's a that's a good way to sum it up. So I'm excited to see what Akili Arnold is going to do. You know, he's, it sounds like he's learning both positions. Everyone's kind of fluid, kind of looking for a spot to play in this defense. So he had a lot of great things to say about Danton Lynn, a lot of great things to say about USC, and a lot of great things about you know joining this program. Easton did say that USC academically is more rigorous than Oregon State. So to any Beavers fans watching this, sorry. His words, not mine. You also heard from Kamari Ramsey, the UCLA transfer, spent last season under Danton Lynn. What were your takeaways from speaking with him? Connor is officially upset he didn't get into that scrum. That's I his know. boy. My number one impact transfer uh, guy when we do the rankings that Ryan and I did back on the show a couple weeks ago, Kamari Ramsey was number one, and I was talking to either Isaiah Rakes or Easton Mascarenas Arnold at that point. Didn't get a chance to talk to Kamari, but hopefully next time. My first question then was, was how was it, how was it putting on a USC Trojans uniform yeah. now that you've been putting on a UCLA uniform? And he said, you know, it's a little different, but he's getting used to it. You know, five practices in, so just give him a little uh, uh, joking with him a little bit there. But, you know, the big thing is, you know, Car- Kamara Ramsey has that experience in Dan Tillon's scheme. He's being looked upon by a lot of guys in that room to help them learn the defense. But he was actually gave a really interesting answer about, you know, he said he is going out there every day and acting like he knows nothing about the defense, so he can continue to soak up more and more. He's only a redshirt sophomore, I believe, and he's only started in it one year, so he still has a lot to learn, even though he's more experienced than 99% of everyone on this defense. But that's kind of the approach he's been having is I go into it every day, you know, pretending like I don't know anything so I can learn the most. But obviously he does know the most out of everyone, so he is fielding a lot of questions from his teammates. Something come up here, I just want to let you know. I don't know what that was. I think your power is a little bit My low. My power is low, but Chris, we, we continue. We continue. The, the recording does not stop. The recording does not stop. Sorry, got a little distracted there. But, you know, like I said, he is just teaching all of his teammates. You know, him and John Humphrey are obviously giving a lot of wisdom to that secondary, but he's excited to be here at USC, USC excuse me, I almost said UCLA. And, uh, you know, very happy that Lynn is here. You know, he said when the news came out that Coach Lynn was moving to USC, you know, no ill will, no hard feelings. He was happy for him. He's got to do what he's got to do. He knows, he understands it's a business decision. He's got a family, so he was happy for him. I spoke to Isaiah Rakes, the Texas A&M defensive lineman transfer. I asked him what it was like to play next to Barry Alexander, and he said he hadn't done that yet. So I don't know if that was something maybe he didn't want to talk about how they're lining up, or maybe he is truthful. But to me, I thought that it was really interesting. He hasn't lined up to Bear so far. So do you think that – can we take anything away from that, Chris? I don't know who he waved to, but yeah, he's, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's someone triple, waved to me. Triple, I triple double is this popular is, on, on this campus. is going off the rails. I didn't realize. I mean, I knew we were being recorded, but that I must look so stupid. Uh, I, I think it's going to be a great clip. I think it's going to be a great <laughs> clip. But I think it kind of hints to that Bear, Bear, Bear Alexander has been a little limited at times early. Oh, true, game. true. So I think that's brain fart it, by me. I think that's a little bit what that's alluding to. Not necessarily like can always count on you, Chris, g- giving away scheme stuff. So yeah that's been kind of a, a thing in spring camp so I think that's more more so what he's talking about but again we'll see you know in the spring game hopefully we can see a little bit of rakes and bear together Isaiah also talked about how coming from Texas A&M this was his last chance and working under Danton Lynn appealed to him with one year of eligibility left he wants to make the most of it wants to be an NFL guy and Learning under Lynn was really appealing. The fact that USA needed some help on the defensive line, I'm sure, was appealing as well. He should play a lot of minutes, so I thought that was something noteworthy as well. And then he was asked, or go ahead. I just wanted to ask very quickly, how big was he up front? Like, you're in that scrum with him. You know, he's a large human being. He, he, he is large and in charge. That's how <laughs> that's how I describe him. Yeah, beefy. I think he weighs the most out of anyone on the team, right? I believe so. I believe he's around 320 pounds, and I believe that is the heaviest. Well, defensive lineman-wise. Because Amos. Because Amos is up there. 
Uh, Alani Noah's up there. Emmanuel Pregnon's probably up there. But as far as the defensive players, yeah, I believe he is the, the heavy. He tips the scales the hardest for the defensive line. He looked big. One other question he was asked, how come you haven't reached your, your full potential maybe at the college level, which sounds kind of like a harsh question relaying it back here on instant analysis. But Isaiah took it in stride, and he talked about how he only has himself to blame, and he, he's ready for this season. So he held himself accountable, which I thought was unique. He was a captain at Texas A&M two years ago. He, he has a lot of good qualities that should really help USC, and those were shown today. I think we've talked all about the people you had the chance to speak with. My last interview was Jacoby Covington. Asked him about the Holiday Bowl. He said that really felt great to be healthy for that six-week stretch leading into the bowl game. He was actually repping at safety for the majority of that time because USC had so many guys enter the portal and they were just low at safety. But a week before, for whatever reason, he switched back to corner and he played really well in that bowl game as we all saw. I asked him what's it going to take to earn a starting job even though it's so early in the year. He said he's not really thinking like that. He just wants to go out and play to the best of his ability. The corner room is stacked though with him, DeCarlos Nicholson, uh, John Humphrey, some of the younger guys have, have been doing really well. I, I do think if Jacoby Covington is healthy for all of spring camp, for all of fall camp, he has as good of a chance as anyone to to be one of those starters. I wouldn't be surprised if it's him and Humphrey with Nicholson rotating in as well. I, I think Jacoby could have a really big year. We'll see if he stays healthy. That's kind of the, the key with him. I lied. I did speak to one more person. Okay. Uh, defensive lineman Nate Clifton. Yes. The Vanderbilt transfer, you can tell You know, Vanderbilt is kind of a very academic school. Uh, not necessarily football, so you can tell you know, he's a really smart kid, a kid who you know, was born and raised in Tennessee, has never been more than 30 minutes away from home. He said that's been the biggest adjustment coming all the way out here to the West Coast. He can't just go 30 minutes up the road to his mother's house, so that's been a big adjustment for him. He did mention he's been primarily focusing on the three technique, so I thought that was interesting, but when I talked to him when he committed, he said he's going to probably be playing every spot, learning it at least because of his versatility and that he backed that up and said, you know, I'm kind of just learning all over because you never know what could happen. But three technique seems to be his primary focus for possibly, possibly the season if he's going to crack the starting lineup. So I thought that was really interesting, but just a good kid, you know, a guy who wanted to a new opportunity, you know, likes this scheme a lot. And, you know, Danton Lynn and Lincoln Riley, when they spoke to him, they sold him, you know, being a playmaker in this in this scheme. So that's what his that's what he aims to do and make a lot of plays this season. We'll wrap it up there between the low battery and the wave. This has been a funny instant analysis. One more. I do have one more thing because we did not get to talk about Eric Henderson and what he said about the current team because he was asking a lot about recruiting. But I did ask him his impressions. He said the guys have been doing well, but he has to have a lot of patience with them. You know, they have a long way to go. They're putting in the work. They're giving him the effort that he wants, but he has to have a lot of patience. Patience was his, like, his key word, that he has to have a lot of patience, remembering you know, these are college kids that he's working with after, after coming from the NFL. When you're in the NFL, these guys come from home. You know, they, they're rested. This is their job. This is what they do. College kids, they have class. They have other things going on. And you know, when they come to practice, sometimes they're tired. Sometimes they, they don't have their energy up. And he says he has to remember that he gets it. So that's been kind of an adjustment working with these guys. They have a long way to go. He said, if we can control the line of scrimmage, we can win a lot of football games. And I know that would make USC fans happy, but they got to get to that point yet. A lot of his riding on this defensive line and then being bullies in the Big Ten. Eric Henderson might be the guy to get in there. A lot of people seem to think so. I believe so. So we'll see as that develops through spring. He's Chris Trevino. I'm Connor Morissette. This has been Instant Analysis. We'll be back bright and early on Tuesday for another edition of Instant because the team returns to the practice field at 530. They also practice on Saturday, but that one's not open to the media. So we will see you on Tuesday. Thanks so much for watching.